comic book fans and welcome to my comic book reviews for the first week of May 2015. 16 books to review this week, um, one back issue, the rest of all, all from this week. Um, the format we're going to go for this week, I'm going to review the indie books first, then it will be DC Comics, then it will be Marvel, then it will be my pick of the week. So, means we've got so, so many books, let's get straight into those reviews. So four indie books to review this week, one from, I, I think it was either last week or the week before, and three books from this week. The back issue, if you will, it's from Dark Circle Comics, it is The Black Hood, issue number three. Um, this issue, last issue rather, um, our hero, Greg Heidegger, got arrested, he got set up and arrested uh, because he'd stolen these pills from this criminal and he'd been taking them and he's a hero on the police force because he took out the Black Hood. But the pain from like his face being disfigured is so much that he's become addicted to pills and to heroin and he's been stealing it from criminals so they've now set him up so that he gets disgraced. This issue kicks off with that with him being arrested and we get to see how he goes from being this victim to become using that as something to kind of bring him back to being a hero again. A really interesting book, really enjoying the development in the char our main character Greg Heitinger as he's gone from like being this cop who tried to do the right thing to being horribly disfigured and kind of this big fall from grace and now he's like a phoenix rising from the flames really like that story I like the relationship with the characters that he's got close to him his old beat partner and his speech therapist that's really interesting and the fact that the criminals are after him as well now as he's kind of slowly systematically taking this organisation down trying to find out who's at the top having watched kind of stuff like Daredevil and Gotham recently, this does have very fami familiar themes in it with, you know, kind of the Daredevil theme where he's trying to find out about Wilson Fisk. You've got that kind of here where he's trying to find out about this guy called The Connection. And, and then you've also got the corrupt police force, which again echoes of Daredevil and Gotham. So yeah, so there are familiar things in here, but I'm just really enjoying this book. The art really adds to the gritty feel as well. All in all, re really enjoyable book from a company I'd never heard of before. Um, and I'm going to give you the Black Hood issue number three. Five stars out of five. So, next up from this week's books. First up from Image, we have Jupiter's Circle, issue number two. Uh, this continues Mark Millard's kind of renaissance, if you will. As, you know, he went through a phase where he, he, he wasn't that highly thought of. And now he's kind of coming back, back up again. Kind of like our hero in the Black Hood. Uh, this issue kicks off with our heroes taking on this alien uh, force that are trying to invade the Earth. Utopian comes up with a great way of dealing with that. We then go back into our Blue Bolt story as he's been blackmailed by the head of the FBI, J. Hager Hoover, who has these pictures of him with another man. Of course, in the 1950s, it's a big scandal, that kind of thing. I think it was illegal at that point. I don't even think... I might be wrong. I'm not that up on American law, but I think I know certain parts of the country world that you know it was at different times illegal so you know the so blue bolt is kind of angry he doesn't know what to do should he give the identities to hoover of his his fellow heroes which kind of will tie them to hoover for like as long as hoover's in power and uh, or you know is there another way out um so yeah i really so the story was an interesting journey i found it a bit surprising that this story wraps up this issue because it's a five issue series so I thought we were going to just have one story all the way through where it pretty much wraps this story up, this issue, which was a bit surprising. Um, I like that they kind of planted the solution early in the issue. I like I liked how they did that. And the end and how it's dealt with was also a surprise, which I really liked and was a, a pleasant twist. But it did, you know, surprise me how quickly it wrapped up. Um, and I don't think it dealt with the issues as much as in the last issue. Um, that it was raising here about you know um, society how society w would accept would turn on him because he was gay um, but all in all though I still really enjoyed it and I'm going to give Jupiter Circle issue number 2 4 stars out of 5 so moving right along we have also from Image we have Descender issue number 3 ah, this is just outstanding um, love the art and the colours Dustin Nugent he does like the ink in the, the pencils and the colours and there's a real kind of like watercolor quality to the art and um, I still say a, a very much a 2000 AD 
kind of feel, um, as well as a bit of a Star Wars -y maybe feel, the way you, you have like the, the colours on the ships. Um, but yeah, I, I really, so yes, the art wise, I just think it's really brilliant. Story wise, it's really good. Every issue we're building on top, and like, we've got this mystery of these harvesters that destroyed um, a lot of life on these nine core worlds. And what the reason why they hate robots so much now? We've got the mystery of Tim Twenty One. We've got the mystery of who is Captain Tal. So there's more to her than we know yet. There's more going on here. Um, there's just a whole load of mystery. And as you get deeper into the story, just this mystery kind of just opens up. And this issue is just glorious from start to finish. I really enjoyed it. There's so much there. Um, I'm definitely, if I get time, I'm going to go back and read all three issues back to back. This has just been a really great series. One of my favourite new series this year. And I'm going to give Descender, issue number three, a definite five stars out of five. So our final uh, indie book this week is from Valiant Comics. It is Dead Drop, issue number one. Um, this is a very interesting book because I, what I understand is the premise is it's going to be one story, but each issue is going to have a different hero carrying on that story. So... That, that's kind of an interesting kind of concept. Um, this issue we have, as you can see from the cover, Exo Man of War, and basically he's chasing this, this woman who has stolen this virus. Now we don't know nothing about this woman, who she is, what, how she knows about this virus, but it, so the whole issue is basically one big chase scene. But she's kind of informed the police that this is a fake Exo Man of War, it's not the real Exo Man of War. So the police are all trying to get and start Exo Man of War while she's trying to get away with this virus. Um, so it's like one action-packed issue, because like it's just all action all the way. But what Alice Cut does really well is he does lace in bits of story in here. So we learn a bit about the virus. We, we learn how dangerous it is. So I liked how he laced it through. The art works really well with, with, with the story. And I just really enjoyed this. Going into it, not really knowing what to expect, but then there's the whole kind of chase thing. There's all if you like a book with a lot of action, this is definitely the book book for you. Another really great start to a series from from Valiant, and I give Dead Drop issue number one five stars out of five. So those are my indie books for this week. Next up, we're gonna do uh, DC Comics, and it's the second week, second month, sorry, of Convergence. So next, our company of the week last week was DC Comics, as they kind of had a, um, there was only a couple of, of Convergence themed books last week I got, and most of the others you, that really helped it get company of the week was like the fantastic Batman issue, Justice League and Superman. This week, kicking off the second month of Convergence, and we're totally knee deep back into Convergence, is that going to be a good thing or a bad thing? So we're going to kick things off with the main book, Convergence. Uh, we have Damas and Warlord on the cover there. There are some really cool moments in the book. Um, there's this really cool moment with uh, Warlord, if I can find it. You can never find these things when you want them. Oh, here it is. Uh, where he smashes through uh, to face Damas on the back of a Triceratops, which is just so cool. Um, so yeah, there are good moments in the book. Uh, but overall, I felt this issue was a step backwards from last week's issue, which I thought is things started to pick up last week. Um, I said last week I felt that the Brainiac Talos relationship reminded me very much of Silver Surfer Galactus, and that's even stamped more home this week as we get the origin of Talos. Uh, his true origin is revealed, and we get to see that he has a lot more in common with the Silver Surfer than we first thought. Um, so that that was interesting. Um, a bit of a gripe this issue. We have a few characters. I think there's about three characters maybe who get killed, but we've only known them for like one issue, and it's kind of like while it's shocking that they're killed, it fails to have the impact because we haven't got to care about them yet. So it's that like, kind of catch thing there. And while it is shocking, it's not as impactful as it could have been. And also it raises the question is if he can kill these people so easily, why doesn't he just kill all the Earth 2 characters? Why does he let them kind of escape? Uh, yeah. Um, so yeah, Dick Grayson has a good moment here where he's looking like maybe he's taking up the bat mantle. Um, this is the Earth 2 Dick Grayson. And the ending to the book is very interesting and I'm, I'm curious to see how that's going to push the story forward. 
Overall, I do feel this was a step back, this issue, and I'm going to give Convergence issue number 5, 3 stars out of 5. So getting into our tie-ins now, first up we have Convergence Superman, issue number 2. And this was one of my favourite Convergence books the first time around, so could this live up to the quality? And it did. Uh, Dan Jurgens just writes Superman fantastically well, and I would love to see, like in the DC have said, oh, our new Ranger books, it's going to be, we're not worrying about continuity and how everything fits in, we're just going to get, let writers tell the best stories they can. Um, I would love to see Dan Jurgens be able to write this version of Superman as an ongoing, because he writes him so well, and it just feels like this is the proper Superman, this is real Superman, like not that fake we've been reading since the New 52 started. And I don't know what it is about the way that they write him that gives him this certain gravitas, this certain feel of it's Superman. Um, I don't know if it's the way that he looks, the way that he, his outfit is, or the way that he's written, but there's just something about him that this feels like it's Superman. Um, the story, however, does feel a bit rushed. Things kind of resolve a bit quickly, and that's probably because they've already got two issues. But yeah, so some of it does feel a bit rushed, and the ending is a bit of a, an abrupt one, um, and kind of took me a bit by surprise. Uh, you kind of like, okay, that's a bit odd. Um, so yeah, that that affected my enjoyment. There is, however, a nice kind of bonding moment between the Flashpoint Batman and the the. Uh, pre-Flashpoint Superman uh, that I liked. The art in here, it's not Lee Weeks, it's, um, I'm going to get the artist's full name. I bet it's going to take me ages to find this now, because whenever you want an artist's name, you know, it, you have to go deep into the book like I am. It might even be at the back, let's have a look. Oh, yeah, no. Here he is, yeah. Uh, Norm Rampmund uh, does the ink art, it says here. Brad Anderson on colours, but it doesn't say... Oh no, Dan Jurgen's done the art. He's done the pencils for the book. Um, that's probably why it looks so classically Superman. Um, but yeah, I, I really enjoyed this. And there's just some great moments with some great poses by Superman there. Um, so yeah, I, I didn't realise... I only just realised there that, that it's Jurgen's doing it. But yeah, this this was brilliant. Another thing I should mention this week's books in the back we have a preview. This issue we had a deep preview of Doomed, which is the new series that one of the new series that's coming out. Um, I didn't read this; it's a Scott Lobdell book, um, so I didn't read that back up. Um, just because Doomed's not a book I'm going to be getting because it's Scott Lobdell and he's not a writer that I really like. So, um, getting back to this, this was still really good even though it wasn't, I felt, a strong, but that's, I don't feel is all Dan Jurgen's fault because he's only got two issues to tell the story. Uh, but I'm going to give Convergence Superman issue number two, four stars out of five. So next up we have um, Convergence Batgirl issue number two. Really been enjoying Stephanie Brown in the New 52, so I was really curious to find out what she was like pre-New 52 because she's a real character I'd never kind of come across. Uh, yeah, and this was a major letdown. I enjoyed the first issue because I enjoyed the emotional story of her stopping being a hero and then kind of being coming back into being a hero after a year and kind of having these doubts of whether she's good enough to be able to defeat whoever she's going to have to go up against. So I kind of, I liked the emotional story of last issue. Uh, this issue was very disappointing. Um, it just really, it, it was like, I, I don't know what... I, I don't know what they were thinking releasing this, it, it was just so bad. Uh, characters do not feel the same. Uh, Red, Red Robin, it's like he's a real jerk in this. He's li like, oh yeah, I dumped you, but I didn't want to see you to dump you, so I kind of just stayed away. But now you're a superhero again, I want to get with you. It's like, ooh. And then at the end, the ending, like, uh, the two characters, two characters are kind of like smooching and, and relaxing. And like the world's been destroyed around them, their world is still in danger, they're on this alien planet and all these different cities have been told there can only be one and you've got to destroy the other heroes and stuff and and they're there smooching on the couch like it's like a Saturday night staying, it's like it was bizarre. Uh, the story as well was very disappointing how it kind of all went out, I, I just really did not enjoy this 
and for the first time ever in my three years of doing reviews I'm going to give a book uh, uh, the lowest score I can give I'm going to give Convergence Back Edition number two one star out of five because I didn't find nothing good and even the art I didn't enjoy there was nothing redeemable about this book at all so that yeah. so that left a bit of a sour taste now try wash this taste out that sour taste out of my mouth we've got Convergence Justice League issue number two um, I enjoyed this you know um, it felt like there was a proper death backward to the death and that the stakes were high and that characters could die uh, which you know was really enjoyable to read the act flashpoint Aquaman is a real douchebag he is a real nasty pasty um, and it, it's really joyous to see a character just so evil and he's just so like he, he, he is tapped in the head if he thinks he could kidnap a woman and she's going to be his wife. He, that ain't how it works, you know. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed seeing this evil Aquaman. Um, plenty of action all through the book. The art, I thought, was really up to it and really good. Um, and, you know, and we get the end, end to the fight that there's a definitive winner and loser. Um, which I also really liked. So yeah, all, I enjoyed this one. So I'm going to give Convergence Justice League issue number two, four stars out of five. So next up we have Convergence the Titans issue number two. Um, again, this I felt this was a step back from the last issue. The last issue, while the, you know I enjoyed seeing the pre New Fifty Two version of Roy Harper, and I found him a much more interesting character than the New Fifty Two version with all that he'd gone through and the, you know but what I really struggled with this issue is how easily they accept that this character has made Roy Harper's daughter reappear when she's supposedly dead and I'm like okay nobody questions is this the real daughter how are we going to prove this or anything they just all really accept oh yeah that's your daughter um, how how did that happen you know so that was something I was a bit, um, a bit, a bit like, it hurt the story for me because so much of the story, the emotion of the story was based around the fact that his daughter was back and he would do anything to protect her. And kind of when that core thing, you're not kind, you've got a problem with and you're not accepting, it kind of makes the story fall down for you. However, I did like the team. I liked how these characters were written. I don't know much about Donna Troy, but she seemed a, an interesting character. I like this version of Starfire and Cyborg and Beast Boy, and I would really like to see this team. Uh, I think would be interesting. Um, I also like the end that that like while they're going on to another fight, that I liked because you know just because their battles won, there's still fights going all over their city as people are trying to 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 win so they survive. So I like that they went on to another battle and it kind of said that, that that's going to be continued. So so that was good. One thing I've been forgetting to do with the books is the, the backups. This backup in this issue was Red Hood and Arsenal, which is another Scott Lobdell book, which I'm not reading. Um, so I didn't read the backup. But yeah, Titans, I enjoyed overall. Didn't think it was as good as last issue, so I'm going to give it three stars out of five. Going rewinding a bit. In the Justice League book, we had uh, the Detective Comics uh, back up with the new Batman. Um, and kind of like, if you hadn't read the free comic book day divergence, you get to find out who the new Batman is uh, by reading this. This is one I'm going to add to my pull list, the Detective Comics, because it looks good. Uh, in Batgirl, I didn't read this, but it didn't appeal to me. We had Divergence Prez. Um, by written by Mark Russell, art uh, by uh, Ben Cordwell. Um, I, I, I not, it's set kind of in the future, but I might go back and read that. But I think that's a good idea this week from the DC books to have those bits at the back. Anyway, getting back to the reviews now, we have Convergent Speed Force issue number two. Uh, I I enjoyed the, this a lot. Um, I don't really know that much about Wally West. All I know about him as a character in the pre New Fifty Two is the Justice League Co. But he's, he's a really interesting character here and I like the dynamic of his children. I like the dialogue between Flash and the, the Flashpoint Wonder Woman. I thought that was really cool and I like that. Uh, there's the real nice ending to this and a real nice lines delivered by his kids which I really liked. Um, 
and all in all I just thought this book was a lot of fun um, and even the art kind of gets that across that it's a fun fun book um, you know you, you look you want a double page spread to show off but, and you never find one when you need one uh, but yeah I, I enjoyed the art, I enjoyed the story, I enjoyed the way the characters were written and it, and at the end of the story it left me uh, very satisfied so yeah I enjoyed it the back in this one the, 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 the preview we get in this one is Green Arrow which I'm a big Green Arrow fan so I was excited um, the story initially there's a lot of like dialogue boxes um, kind of inner monologue boxes as he, he goes you know basically to the edge of the world to kind of find himself uh, the end of the story I felt was where this, this issue come alive um, and I really really enjoyed that so I'm looking forward to Green Arrow looks like that's going to be good again but as to this book I enjoyed this a lot it was a lot of fun and I give Convergent Speed Force issue number 2 4 stars out of 5 so those are our DC books for this week next up it's Marvel and a big week for Marvel so let's get to the Marvel books So next we got Marvel and got six books from them this week to do in our main review. I'm going to kick things off with our friendly neighborhood Amazing Spider-Man. It is in issue number 18 and it's concluding this whole story with this character called Ghost who's been hired by a rival to Parker Labs to destroy Parker Labs. Um, the opening heart part of the book I kind of didn't quite get into. I found the whole thing, Parker Labs gets destroyed basically burnt to the ground but there's no real consequences at the end like secrets are revealed and they just make up and they're going to carry on so there was no real like what was the point of destroying park industries they're going to carry on as normal you know at the moment at least it doesn't feel there's no consequence to what's happened so like if there's no consequences to it why should we get emotionally invested to it um still for me the character i'm enjoying most in this book is anna marie marconi such a fantastic character that they brought in I really want to see her and her end up with with Spider-Man. I'd like to see them as a couple because she's just brilliant. I really, really like her character and she's by far the best thing in this book. And so yeah, and once again, she steals the show for me. Um, the stuff at the end with the black hat is brilliant and it kind of redeems because the rest of the story kind of wasn't that great. But it kind of redeems things right at the end with all the black cat stuff we get. Um, I get that this issue is kind of like a lot of the books are finishing for Secret Wars and we don't know coming out of Secret Wars what Spider-Man are we going to get. Is he going to be married to Mary Mary Jane? Is he going to have his secret identity still be known? And so there's a lot of things we don't know yet are coming out of Secret Wars what Spider-Man's going to be like and there's kind of maybe threads of this story we're not going to get finished because it's going to be a different Spider-Man so that's going to be interesting. But this book, I yeah, I enjoyed. Um, I enjoyed in the main, um, even though I think there were weaknesses. And I'm going to give Amazing Spider-Man issue 18, three stars out of five. Next up, we have Spider-Woman issue number seven. Oh wow, this was brilliant. Um, the art by Javier Rodriguez is so much fun. Um, I really, really like the art and the way that he he lays it all out. Um, it, it, I definitely, and it's not not surprising because he did work on Daredevil, but there's definitely a Daredevil vibe to it. Like we see here, how she escapes, which I just think is a fantastic double page spread. Um, really good. I like the twist in the story. The story we've been following is Ben Ulrich and Spider Woman on the case of the supervillains who are having loved ones kidnapped, and then they've been threatened, and they have to do these jobs to protect the, to so that their loved ones will stay alive. They've basically been blackmailed into being criminals. And kind of Spider-Woman wants to do something about this, so Ben Ulrich, they're trying to locate who's behind all of this. And there's a really nice twist in the tale, and I really, really enjoyed it. Um, it just totally caught me off guard. I didn't expect to be behind it who is. And it was just brilliant. I absolutely loved it. Um, so yeah, um, I, I, there's nothing else really to say about this, but it's just really good. And and that because everything else that I kind of want to comment on comes from that twist. 
Um, it sets the next issue up brilliantly. I'm still loving Spider Woman's new outfit. It's so functional that it's just superb. All in all, this has just been a really great book, and I'm going to give Spider Woman issue number seven five stars out of five. So next up, we have the final issue of the Hulk of Hulk issue. This is 16, the final issue. It was a 4.99 book. Um, I don't know why the backup. While the backup is quite fun and quite amusing. I don't really see the point of why it was there and I think we could have lived with that mystery uh, still been a mystery and had this be a dollar less so yeah uh, or at least if they're gonna make it 499 have the main story all the way through and no backup because the main story it, there's no real action in this issue but there's a lot of emotional drama uh, the great scenes between Hulk and or Duck Green and She-Hulk and there's a great scene between Bruce Banner and Betty Ross. So there's some great moments in the book. And the art is just really great. Again, Bagley, just as the series has gone on, his art's just got better and better and better. But uh, the story just really ends abruptly. And there's still so many things not resolved at the end of the series. And you've got to think, again, if this is gone now and they're going to relaunch with a new Hulk book after Secret Wars, what Hulk are we going to get? Are any of are some of these plot points ever going to be picked up? So that was a bit disappointing uh, because I was hoping for more finality from a final issue, uh, which we don't get. Um, so yeah, strange last issue. I'm going to give Hulk issue 16 three stars out of five. So next up, our Panorama Marvel book. Um, we have. Rocket Raccoon issue number 11 and this felt very much like a last issue at the end it says the end um, I don't know if there's going to be another issue or if this is finished because I know they're launching the group book so I don't know if this is still going to be going but yeah it, it felt really really like a final issue as it ties everything up uh, which I liked it brought everything together and, and that was great um, it also was a really fun story as well and I like how Scotty Young writes Rocket Raccoon uh, there's a real fun to the whole series. Um, I also like how they deal with the origin of Rocket. That he's like after this book that's going to reveal his origin. But then he kind of reads it. And we the reader don't get to know what's in it. And I liked how they dealt with that. Uh, whether it gave him answers or not. Um, you know I like that they kept that mystery about the whole origin of Rocket. I thought that was good. Uh, oh no yeah I really enjoyed this. I'm going to give Rocket Raccoon issue 11. 4 stars out of 5. So our final Marvel book, it is the big release of the week, um, Secret Wars, issue number one. This was brilliant, it feels epic. The cover, um, you've got like this cardboard cover, which you could argue you should get for like $4.99. Uh, you know, then you've got like the presentation, you open it up, and it just really feels like straight away you feel epic. Um, with Rubik's art and Hickman's writing, it feels it, epic. It feels like an event comic should feel. It feels like this is a big bleeping deal, and that's how you should feel when you're buying an event comic. It should feel like it's a big deal. Um, like that's the thing with Convergence. It doesn't feel when you buy it. It just feels like another book. It doesn't feel like this is a big deal because not all the heroes are involved, and this is. Um, I was really surprised they go through with what they said. This is the end. I'm going to spoil something slightly. Um, if I can find it. You can never find things when you want. So yeah, you get this on the last page. You know, saying the Marvel Universe 1961 to 2015. Ultimate Universe. So like, both universes are destroyed in this. Which... I was like, wow, they're not messing about here. Uh, characters are killed off, worlds are destroyed. It was, like I say, it was epic, it was shocking, it was at times gut punching. But I was gripped all the way through it. And it's going to be interesting coming out of this what we're going to get. And I'm, I'm excited for next issue. We have on the back cover, we have next week's cover, which just looks awesome with all the different fours on that cover. Uh, so yeah, I'm just super, super excited for this. And I keep trying to tell myself, don't get too excited because, you know, events let you down. Um, but yeah, this was a really great kickoff point. I don't know if you've not been reading Hickman's Avengers books, how easily you'd follow the story. The basic gist is 
uh, there's only two worlds left in the multiverse. Worlds have been colliding and been one has to be destroyed for the other to survive. But now it's come down to just two, uh, the Ultimate Universe and the regular Marvel Universe. And they're kind of basically both fighting for their lives, trying to be the Earth that survives. Which unfortunately, neither Earth does. Um, some, like I say, some really great moments throughout this, which I really liked. Um, and all in all, this, this was really good and I'm very excited to see where it goes. I'm going to give Secret Wars issue number one, five stars out of five. So, those are the Marvel books. Next up, let's find out what my pick of the week is. So, we're nearly at the end of my video. And next up, it is our pick of the week, or my pick of the week, rather. For the first week of May 2015, my pick of the week is... Inhuman Annual issue number one. This concludes the Inhuman series, which I believe in Secret Wars it's going to pick up with Inhuman Attilan Rising, and then after Secret Wars we're going to have Uncanny Inhumans. But this rounds up the first story. Uh, Charles Soul uh, was a writer I knew nothing about, and then he took over Swamp Thing, and now these years later he's been one of my favourite writers, and again he proves why here. This is how you conclude a series. Everything kind of gets wrapped up. The the big things that we've been following get wrapped up. Characters have their moments, their moments in the sun. Uh, we have plot points to push the for story story forward to be picked up maybe later, but that you do feel you get a satisfying conclusion. So this does what it needs to do. So I was ve that was something there that I really enjoyed. The art here, we get Ryan Stegman back on art, and there are some really really great moments. Um, in the book where he gets to show off as an artist what he can do um, so yeah really pleased to see Ryan Stegman back on the book um, all, like I say all the characters get their moments to shine some real big things come out during the issue with some returns uh, as well of characters which is really really good it does, was very satisfying. If you've been following this book from issue one to the annual, you feel you've got a satisfying story and it resolves itself well. Uh, basically, we have the character um, Lineage, whose inhuman ability he has the knowledge of all his ancestors. He's drunk the, the essence of the capo, and now he has all the capo's knowledge as well, and he uses that to to uh, use his knowledge of the inhuman helix to turn these humans in New Jersey into wild rabid animals. So the humans kind of have to deal with that. We've got characters who have been transported somewhere else and are in trouble. So they can't get, so everything's really hitting the fan here. Things are looking bleak. And I just really enjoyed the whole story. I, I've come to care a lot about these characters and that's because of Charles Hart's writing. Uh, a real, real enjoyable read. I don't know if you'd enjoy this as much if you hadn't read the series. I mean, you've need. I think it's because I've read the series all the way through that that's why this resonates so much. I mean, if you're just reading this as a standalone comic, it probably while it would be would be good, it wouldn't be as great as it is because it's the the end of this journey we've been on. Uh, I'm going to give so yeah, my pick of the week of the first week of May 2015 is in Human Annual issue number one. So you've made it to the end of my video and it's time to find out who the company of the week is. Uh, what this is, is every week I, I take the scores of my books, for example Marvel, I add the scores together from all the Marvel books, I divide it by the number of Marvel books I've reviewed and that gives me an average score. I then do the same for DC and for the Indies and we, we look who gets the best score and they are then the company of the week. Last week's company of the week was DC Comics. This week they were in third place of our, our three categories as they had an average rating of 3.1. Convergence second month was not a good, good good start to the second month for DC. Then second place we had Marvel with an average rating of 4.1. But in first place with an average rating of 4.7 were the Indies. Uh, so yeah, company of the week this week are the Indies. So that was like this week there was Dark Circle Comics. There was Image and there was Valiant. So they are, they were collectively as the Indies with the Company of the Week. Um, yeah, you could say maybe it's a bit unfair in a one way. The Indies only had four books. 
Marvel had seven books and DC had six books. So you could maybe say maybe the numbers a bit more unfair, but yeah, the Indies they didn't have a wheat book amongst theirs this week. Uh, before I go, one thing I want to talk about is uh, I was given this when I picked up Secret Wars this week. It is a pre free preview. They did this. I can remember them doing these before. Um, and basically, it's kind of like all the different Secret Wars books. Um, like we kick it off with uh, Battle World, which I'm giving a miss. Though it looks interesting, the story as we have this kind of Doctor Castle. It's kind of a combo of, of the Punisher with Doctor Strange in kind of one person uh, which is interesting and that does look interesting to say the least but now nah, I won't be picking up the back of world book uh, we have ultimate end as well in there which is another book I won't be picking up the one book I will be looking at now is Inhumans at Till and Raising um, the art here looks good um, and again it's written by, by um, Charles Souls I'm gonna give that a look for definite um, that was one I'm going to add. We then have Secret Wars Journal, which it, it looks like it's the female Hawkeye in kind of like m medieval Robin Hood like times. Um, I'm going to miss that. We have Secret Wars 2099. I'm going to give that a miss as well. Um, because, you know, you can't get everything. Uh, we have Spider Verse. This is the one that took me by surprise. Deadpool's Secret Secret Wars. Um, I like Deadpool, but he's a character I, I can only take like a mini series. Maybe I couldn't read an ongoing. I like him for a story, for story, and then a you know a break from him. He's not a character I could read every month. But you know, Secret Wars was the first book that I collected, so I'm really you know I I'm this does look a lot of fun. Uh, so I may be adding that one. Already or oh, pre-ordered Old Man Logan. That's on my list. Um, enough said. It is. Sorrentino art. Enough said there. Um, we then have Inferno, which if you're an X-Men fan, that might be good. The only thing that really got me here was the old uniforms, like you have Cyclops in his old uniform there. That was the only thing that really got me there, because um, mm -hmm. where Monsters Dwell uh, was another one. I've already pre-ordered that. Um, that looks a lot of fun. Uh, we have Planet Hulk, which there's no dialogue for this, but you've got Captain America and Devil the Dinosaur, which is just like on Planet Hulk, which that's just awesome. Uh, we have the Infinity Gauntlet, which is another one I've already ordered, um, which looks good here. That's some of the art for it there. Um, so yeah, I liked this book. Uh, oh, and at the back we've got. We got A Force, some pencils of A Force and Moldark Assassin. Um, which looks like it could be a fun series. But yeah, um, I like the idea of this, kind of to give you a little of a glimpse into some of these books. I thought this was a very good idea to do that with Secret Wars, and certainly for me, a couple of books there I wasn't going to get, I kind of changed my mind on, thanks to that. So that was a very good marketing plan for Marvel there. Uh, anywho, that's enough. Uh, of me twittering on um, I'm done for another week I'll be back Wednesday with a whole video um, thank you very much for watching if you've enjoyed the video please give me those beautiful thumbs up uh, if you agree or disagree with anything I say please feel free to leave comments below I'll endeavor to get back to you as quick as I can um, yeah that's pretty much everything so I'm, I'm gonna say that I've been Jason these will be my comic book reviews bye for now <laughs>